Welcome back everyone. Well, first of all, apologies for not posting a video in quite a long time. I'm busy with a, a new project that I've been, well, not new, I've been busy with it for about four and a half years now. And it's finally showing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. And there's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing. Um, I'll definitely share every, all of that with you in several different videos that I'm planning but uh, there's still still a bit of time that, that needs to to go by before that's going to happen um, I'm uh, 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 it will probably be about another four to six months and then we'll, we'll start to share some information on that uh, very interesting anyway I've had a few requests for uh, Zach nymphs to show, show you how to tie a Zach nymph. Now the, the Zach nymph was developed by Tom Sutcliffe. Now, many of you will know who that is, especially if you're a South African fly fisherman. And um, it was developed for, for, for small streams. Uh, he fished the Natal Midlands, um, he fished pretty much every stream in this country. Uh, but he fished the Natal Midlands and the, and the Cape streams extensively. And it's a it's a um, a fly that that I, I always say it's the it's the rab of wet flies in or the rab of nymphs. Uh, the rab is a is, was developed by by Tony Biggs also for the for the small streams in the Cape especially. And um, the the Zac is also one of those flies that's not a <coughs> excuse me it's not a very neat fly. And it shouldn't be a very neat fly. Now I fished both the rab and the 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 um, the zac nymphs in in several different rivers around the world. Um, I fished them in, in most of the rivers in South Africa, and and then I fished them in uh, in Montana. I fished the Madison, the Soda Butte. Although the the rab and the zac are not really flies for the Madison, unless it's a very small, thin little area in the in the river um, but the soda butte and the and the gallatin they are beautiful on those rivers um, i fished them in north carolina i fished them in the smoky mountain reserve in um, in north carolina in i fished them in georgia tennessee um, there's some really nice nice waters there which which are perfect for the both the rab and the, and the um the zac now the the Zac is it's a little mayfly nymph that you tie with very little material. Now Tom Sutcliffe in his in his uh, on his website he shows how he ties it with a, a water mongoose tail. Now being a commercial fly tire trying to get water mongoose is just one of those impossible things. It's uh, uh, we just don't have access and we can't find enough of the stuff, so we don't even look for it. Um, but um, there are substitutes, so you can tie it with squirrel tail, you can tie it with jackal tail, you can tie it with fox. There, there are many different different um, uh, materials. What I'm going to do tonight is to tie it with materials that you will most probably have on your bench or in your tying room somewhere. And uh, the tail I'm going to tie with uh, a, a normal black uh, strung saddle hackle. I'm going to tie that in, cover the hook with a um, with with thread, and you tie that tail in to be about the same length as the as the hook shank. Now I'm using a grip one two double o four size four, 14, and I'm using a grip bead two point four millimeter gold brass bead. Uh, you can tie it with all sorts of different beads. You can tie it with glass beads. You can tie it with tungsten. You can vary the color if you want to. I can remember the first Zach that Tom Sutcliffe showed me was one tied with a with a clear glass bead. Um, and it all depends on the water you fish. So um, I'm going to tie it with, with uh, just a bead and no, not I'm not going to put any lead in. Although on, in his, on his website, in the, in the instructions that he gives, you see there's a photo where he tied a uh, a few wraps of lead in the thorax area you can do that if you want to add extra weight I just if I want to add extra weight I just add uh, I just tie it with a tungsten bead 
the, the, the extra weight there can make the fly a bit bulky, especially if you tie smaller flies, smaller versions of the fly. So you, you need stripped peacock hole. So there's, there's different ways of stripping it. You can use a thin, your, your fingers, you can use a, a, um, a chemicals, you can use all sorts of things. I, I use a technique that Tom Sutliff showed me, and that is to use 20% or 80% water and 20% chick or, it's a, or any chlorine based chemical. And you leave it in there for a while, wash them off and, and they come out pretty clear. You'll see on the base here there's still a few fibers. Uh, it's a little bit hairy still there, but I just leave it like that. I don't I don't even take that off. Now I like to use the peacock eyes for this because it they taper. And if you tie them in the right way, it will help you to taper the abdomen of the body. Or, or the abdomen of the fly rather. So so you tie that in behind the bead. Leave that right there, just secure it with a few wraps. Cut that off. Then you tie a strand of normal peacock hole in. Just a thin uh, uh, just one peacock hole. And then the magic material, which is a purple thread that you buy from a haberdashery shop. And uh, it's like a metallic thread. And you tie a piece of that in. It's a very simple fly to tie. And then you grab all of that together and you tie that down to the back all the way to the tail where you start the tail. Take a thread forward and then you twist all this together. and wrap that around the hook. Now, this is not that Adam's parachute or Catskill dry where you need to, where all the wraps need to be 100% next to each other. It's a, the fly needs to look a bit rough. That is one of the main things and I think that is one of the things that make it such a successful fly. And you tie all that off right there. Now you don't cut that off. You just secure it there with a few wraps of thread. Now, next, what you're going to do is to take a genetic hackle. I'm going to grab one here, and this is not a very good quality genetic hackle. This is from a saddle, you can use hackle from capes, you can use hackle from pretty much, I think I'm going to grab another one, those, those fibers are a little bit short on that one. Um, it's, it's a wet fly, so you don't need A grade genetic hackle, there's, there's one with pretty good fibers, the tip is broken, that's going to be perfect. see about the length there, it's, it's longer than the hook gape. You open that up. And you strip the one side, strip the fibers from the one side. Then you cut that tip off. You tie that in right there. Where you tie the other material off. Just get in there and tie that in, cut the excess away. And now 
now you take this material you twist it again I always start to twist it without the hackle and then I bring the hackle in and kind of wrap that around it. It, it it just helps to hold everything together and again it doesn't have to be neat it can be a bit messy and the messier I think that like I said I think that is what makes this fly such a successful fly this is now very messy I just want to get control over this there you go and once you've done that you can open those fibers out a little, up a little bit some of them will be cracked so you just pull them out a little bit and then you wrap all of that around the hook and you'll see that the fibers are pointing in all directions which is what you want you don't want it's not a dry fly remember it's a wet fly you don't want too many fibers there you don't want them to be all nice and neat like a dry fly they must point in all directions and imitate legs they must imitate a bit of movement in the water and you're going to cut all that off brush that open a little bit and that's it tie that off and you can see it's a very sparsely tied or, or the legs rather are very sparse now you can you can tie this I'm by, by the way I'm using a 8-0 grip thread tie this you want a kind of a thin thread you don't want to tie it with a thick thread it makes it too bulky cut that off and that's the the zack now I'm going to the tail is a bit messy that's fine it will straighten out nicely in the water I'm going to show you something else now that I've done and it's it's not my it's not my idea, but um, it was, uh, uh, I, I saw it somewhere and I cannot remember. So unfortunately I cannot give credit to, to whoever started doing this. And I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking it's either Tom Sutliff or, or maybe Ed Herbst that, that did this. And that is to tie the Zach in the thorax area without hackle, but you tie it with CDC. And that for, for, for very thin, clear, slightly slower water works very well for me uh, i'm going to tie it with a bead again a 2.4 mil brass bead <coughs> and i just want to get this bead on here and then the tail is the same the abdomen is the same it's just in the thorax area where things are a little different so you wrap Again, you, you, you wrap the, the tail or the hook with the thread and you can, you can use different hooks. There's, you can use the, the grip uh, uh, 13812 which is a long shank hook in size 14 and 16. Uh, you can use the, the 12804 which is a shorter shank nymph hook, kind of a wider gape. So if you want to tie a size 14 fly size fly i would use a size 12 hook because it gives you that extra bit of um uh, 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 gape in in the hook um so you tie the same tail same everything if i can just get my tail material here I'll grab a few fibers from a um strong saddle apple Tie that in on top of the hook to create that tail. Take the thread forward, tie in two stripped peacock holes from the 
on of the peacock hole. Then tie in a normal piece of peacock hole. I like to use the sparser pieces. Well, I don't think I have any of those here. And tie that in. And then the magic purple stuff. There we go. And you wrap that all the way to the back. The nice thing of doing it this way is that you just secure everything in the front and then with one wrap run to the back you tie everything down. Take the thread forward, twist the material together and wrap it around the hook. Abdomen shouldn't be too hairy, but if there's a little bit of fluff on the back, then it's nothing wrong with that. Then you tie that off right there. And just leave that. Just get another wrap over there and you leave that there. Now the next step, what you do is, and I will link, I'll, I'll put a link in as well, is to take your CDC. There is a link on the on the on my channel on how to create a split thread CDC brush. Um, it's very simple. I will um, I will show you how to do that on the. Um, uh, 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 the it, it shows very clearly on the um, on that video. I will I will put post a link below this video on that, and. And I use a, a Petit Jean clamp just to hold the CDC there to make the brush. Now I'm going to split the thread and and do that um, CDC brush. And instead of putting a hackle in, you put that CDC brush in in there, which works very well to. Um, I'm going to try and see this thread. There we go. I use one of these uh, CNF bobbins. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, or oh, botkins rather. Uh, dubbing needles. Put that CDC in there. Spread it out a little bit and then twist the thread in the bobbin. And that will make a very small little brush. Now what you do with that is now you can't wrap the 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 the, the, the brush around the material and then take your thread forward. So what you do is you just twist everything together. You wrap the material around the thread. And then you grab all of that together. It gets a bit messy. You have to try and keep control over everything. Grab all of that and you wrap that around the hook. Just try and avoid the material from separating or splitting. I'm going to undo that and try and do that again. Push that bead back, bead back a little bit. 
and then you when you get to the end of this you need to just hold it with your thumb in or with your forefinger in place and work your thread out of there and then you grab the material and you make one wrap to secure that just to make sure it stays in place that's that's good it's a bit of CDC in the thread that I just want to get rid of and now you've got the material trapped in behind the bead and you can cut that excess off and you can see the different legs that it creates now you can use a longer CDC you can uh, use more CDC. I don't like to use too much in, in legs. I like to keep it sparse and It's it's a Perfect pattern for very small streams thin water um, and slow water and that's it That's the, the Zatnum for the CDC so you can go and play around with it. You can see it's a very uneven CDC wrap. It doesn't matter. It's it's a rough fly. It's a, it's a, it's a, a very a, a messy kind of kind of pattern. And and like I said earlier, I think that's what makes it a very successful pattern. So play around with it. Uh, please like the video. Please subscribe to the video. Comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Please comment on the videos, and I will hopefully have something new for you very soon. Thanks for watching.